Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm looking at a Conair um, cordless clipper here today. It's a bit older and it's not working. Power supply is 5.6 volts and uh, basically it's not taking a charge at all now. I checked the adapter and it's uh, putting out uh, about almost 6 volts so that's, that's okay. Um, previous to this I could plug this in and charge it up for about 6-8 hours or 10 hours whatever and use it. But the problem back then was uh, if I left it charged but unplugged it would lose its charge and go dead. So if I wanted to use it I had to charge it for 8 to 10 hours or like you know basically overnight if I was going to use it. So uh, came with a bunch of uh, hardware. So I'm not going to show you just the gauges. And, uh, so anyway I'm going to uh, attempt to take it apart and and see what's on to go, but I'm pretty sure uh, the issue is um, the battery is toast. So I just want to, I'm going to try to do this live for you. I'm going to take this as a Phillips screwdriver here. Um, we got Phillips heads here. I'm going to take off the plate here. Try to keep it in shot for you. It's very difficult. And uh, hold the plate down so don't uh, everything don't go flying everywhere because you're going to want to see how this uh, comes apart. I'm going to get this over in the shot here. I'm going to take off this top plate. Uh, this plate here. Set it aside. With the screws, of course. And we see a uh, the blade area here. And uh, we're just going to lift this up to a very carefully out of its situation here. As you can see. Get that in the shot. And it's like two components built into one. And as you can see... Uh, these wires need to be put in that. You see where in the socket. So if you ever take it apart, uh, plastic goes down in there and this sits into the shaft that vibrates or spins, I should say. And these pins need to be locked in place. Put that aside. And now we see. Um, we get a small flat screwdriver and just pry up this case here. This little clip here, and that's gone flying across the table, which exposes. Uh, two screws here, and there's a screw here, down in here. So back to the Phillip, and we'll be in like Flynn. And uh, try to do this all in shot. That other piece that fell off there is uh, nothing serious. It's made of hard plastic, so it's not broke. Just a matter of putting it back in place. But uh, yeah, it must have been spring loaded in there somehow, wedged in. So that went flying. So I'm going to remove these uh, two screws here. Try not to lose them. And then we're going to take apart the clamshell here, basically. One, take one from the other. And I get access. There we go. So we get that flat top again. And. Um, Get in there along the edge, along the edge of the side, and along the edge of the side, and it's loose. So if it's in the shot here, I'm going to open it up. So here we have the circuit board, the LED, the motor that's offset so it spins, just makes the blade spin back and forth very quickly. And I'm going to test to see if I can bypass, because it's a, it's a 5.6 volt battery in here. And it's a bigger battery, if you can see that. I'm not sure, right down in there it's around. It's a bit bigger than a, a AA battery. And a bit longer. So it's, in order, it's rounder and longer. So If I put in just a 1.5 volt, it's not going to run that motor. Now I'm thinking, what I'm thinking of doing with this, because I know the battery's gone and finding a replacement, I haven't looked online, it's possible. Might find one for a few dollars, I don't know, I will check. But my intention here now is to see if I can run this adapter, this 5.6 volt DC adapter, directly into this board and power that motor with the switch. So if I can bypass the power here on the battery 
and get on this circuit board and send the power direct. I'm wondering if I could use it plugged into wall. It's difficult to say, so I'm just going to do some more testing here now to see if that's possible. So I've gone in a bit deeper here. I've removed this uh, bottom piece here, two screws holding the circuit board. And uh, here we have a 700 milliamp 2.4 volt battery. And it's actually, if you look at it, it looks like it's actually two batteries. And it is. So it's two 1.2 volt batteries. Negative, positive, negative, positive. So it's, it's in, uh, in parallel, I believe that's what it's called. So, sadly, there's not enough room for two uh, AAA batteries here. But I'm wondering if I had AAA, two AAA batteries that I could sneak in here. That is the question. But I'm not exactly sure why it's quit. Is it the battery? Or is it the circuit board? Now we do have some looks like glue. I don't think that's corrosion. So it's what I'm going to do is I'm going to it would be, wouldn't be too difficult to remove the batteries out of there, but I'm wondering if I could get two double A's to sit in that same spot. I may have some rechargeable double A's, and they would have to be NICAD. NICAD batteries. Just wondering. Could wrap them up in plastic and get them in there? It's debatable. So let's see what we can do. Okay, I don't have rechargeable batteries. Uh, triple A's. I have lots of double A's, but I don't have the rechargeable triple A. But just in the event that I would have had one, uh, the original battery, the 2.4 volt, would have fits down in here. And the only way, as you can see, if I put the two triple A's in there, there's, they just don't fit. So that's a bust. And I'll have to do damage, break open the case to actually get the batteries to fit in. So uh, the issue now is uh, a 5.6 volt, um, let's see if we can get it in camera, 5.6 volt, put it the other way, it'd be great. 5.6 volt adapter uh, hooked up direct to the electrical the circuit board here but the battery is 2.4 volts so the circuitry here for charging purposes takes 5.6 but for running it's only 2.4 volts so now I'm thinking about what this motor needs. How much voltage could it run? Um, difficult to say. I can test it uh, on, let me think, uh, 2.4. No, it's, a, it's an improbability, really. Yeah, it probably runs on 2.4 volts or maybe 2 volts, so, but the problem is getting an adapter down to that voltage to run directly to the motor and then you have heating problems because obviously there's some conditioning and smoothing of power I guess you could say so that's the difficulty of where I am now so I am going to pause the video and check and see if I can find a battery uh, like this online I just want to test to see if there's power getting in from the jack here to the battery so we have the uh, the jack plugged in here 
and I'm going to attempt to check with the meter here, set on DC voltage. And uh, okay, we have something there. Just get in here a bit closer if I can see, make sure I'm getting the 4.6 volts. I'm going to unplug the adapter from the back, the plug here, and I'm going to check the voltage directly from the pin. Negative on the outside and positive tip. Yep. So the wires here are getting to the circuit board and uh, so we plug that back in now and uh, gonna go further up the circuit board see if I can find somewhere to get another test point to see if the voltage is getting up into the battery. Okay another test point here would be the actual battery and we're gonna put the uh, negative here and the positive here to see what the meter I hope you can see the meter here so we got 2.4 volts. So the battery technically is fully charged. Isn't that interesting? Okay, we have to regroup here and figure out what's going on here. If I unplug this and uh, now we'll see if the battery has any charge or was it just getting charged directly from the the battery uh, from the adapter so here we go negative positive yes we have 2.4 volts so stand by we have to do some more testing okay in poking and prodding I discovered that the switch metal was just sitting there and broken so as you can see right here is where that piece of metal should be and it would make contact with the top two points here so at here back here I would assume is rest and making this connection here would cause it to get power to run through I don't know why the LED is not lighting up and charging that's the issue right now so I'm thinking this clip Although it was sitting exactly where it should have been, possibly just ready to break or broken already, or I'm not sure. May have shorted something out on the board. Um, again, we're at a, a bit of a impasse again, but uh, we're certainly making progress as to figure out what is wrong. I see this is cracked here, so this is not going to last very long. We are definitely going to have issue with that. So it's probably time to say that it's worn out and uh, there's not much more we can do really in, in this regard. So I am going to do some more further testing but I think uh, this, is a, this is a done deal on this video. Um, just like to know why it's not charging or not showing a charge and possibly uh, why it's not powering up. If I turn that switch up, of course the switch doesn't have anything to do it now but if I make contact here with that battery, nothing comes on. Crossing those terminals, making connections to the two sides of the board there, the positive and the negative, is not, uh, I'm not getting anything. So there you have it. Uh, at least uh, we, we gave it a, a try and uh, Thanks for watching.